G'day. Welcome to this fourth Sunday of Advent. As we gather today, hear the words of Jesus to his disciples. A new commandment I give to you. Love one another. As I have loved you, so you will love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples. If you have love one for another. Let's pray. Loving Father God, we thank you for your love. We honour your love. We celebrate your love. For we find life and all we have in your love. For it is from your love that you created the whole earth, called all things into being. It is in your love that you come to us again and again, seeking to save us from the things we get ourselves into. Gracious God, we thank you, we honour you, and we come in worship of you this day, seeking an experience of that love, the love that touches ministers transforms lives the love that calls and equips disciples of Jesus we present ourselves to you all we have and all we are in the name of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ Amen let's sing together
hear the word of the psalmist. But I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. And I will sing the Lord's praises, for he has been good to me. In love, God created. Because of love, God saves. It's the words of John 3, 16 and 17 declare for us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Jesus is the ultimate expression of God's love. We light this candle as a sign and a symbol, a declaration that hate, indifference, mistrust and fear will not prevail. For in Jesus, the love of God is shown. In Jesus, the promise of God is fulfilled. In Jesus, we are loved. Loving Father God, in knowing your love, our joy is complete. In embracing your love, we know true peace. In allowing your love to work in us, our hope is strong. Gracious God, we look to the coming of Jesus as the fulfillment of your promises and our dreams. We light this candle as both a declaration to the world of the transforming power of your love and a commitment to embrace your way of love. By your spirit, fill us with love this day, that our lives might be a witness to the hope, peace and joy that can be found in you. Fill us with your love for you and our neighbour. In the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Love. 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 We use it in so many ways. A word that has the potential for so much deep meaning and yet is thrown about so flippantly, so irreverently. My experience is that for many of us, we have this deep-centered sense of need. We need to be loved. And yet so many of us have been hurt by those that we thought loved us. That there are times where we want to reject love and say, yeah, I don't need it. And yet we're drawn to it. And, and in some people's lives, there's this kind of magnetic attraction and repulsion happening at the same time. No wonder people get hurt and confused. Love. What do we think of when we think of love? What runs through your head? Is it acts of kindness, people serving you, you serving others? Is it words that warm you, encourage you, help you to feel loved? Is it a hug or a kiss, the hold of a hand, some kind of physical touch? Is it those gifts? Not necessarily expensive gifts, little gifts. Gifts that say, I was thinking of you when I was away from you, so I bought you this. Even if the gift is the rose plucked from the garden in the street makes us feel loved is it the giving of our time the activity is not important the words are not important it's just here I am there are so many ways in which we hear 
that we are loved. There are many ways in which we show we are loved. Sometimes we don't line those up. And our attempts to love others fall flat because in their head and heart space, they don't see the love coming their way. And sometimes in our broken world, it's just because, well, we've forgotten how to read love well. We end up believing the words that once were shared with me by a young man living on the street. Love is what you say to get what you want. In his context, love, the word, had become core to abuse and to manipulation. Our world, we, are in desperate need of a reminder of the goodness and the power of the love of God. Let's pray. Loving Father God, we recognize that we, like others, are drawn to love like a moth to light. And we are repelled at times by the claims of love. We shut ourselves off because we don't want to be hurt again. We choose not to love because we have expended so much and been used and abused. Lord, we need you now. We need you to help us reclaim the place that love can have in our life as a place of hope and life, of beauty. God of grace, soak us in your love this day. Forgive us for when we have misused the word, for when we have taken the opportunity to love and trashed it. For when we have refused the care and the love of others or misconstrued it. God, we know your love is good. Forgive us for when we have failed to embrace your love for us or shared that love with others. And in love, by grace, forgive us our sin, that we might be renewed and cleansed, able to love again, able to forgive others and ourselves, and to be steadfast in our love for you, and the world. For we pray for our world now. We pray earnestly, deeply for a hurting world, a world in need of your love. We pray for all those who at some point in their journey have been used and abused by others, those who should have loved but have committed heinous hurts. Lord, for those carrying the pain of that, we pray your healing, your comfort, and your renewal. For those who have chosen to weaponize love and to use it to get what they want, we pray humility, repentance, and love. For those who are in a place to care for others, we pray compassion and courage and endurance. And for those who have loved and lost, we pray your comfort and your peace. Lord, you know what it is to love and to be rejected. To love 
and to be left out. You know the cost. Death on a cross. You know the heartache. And yet you love. Steadfast and faithful. May all people know your love this day. In Jesus' name, amen. The great hymn, Love Divine. A reading from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 1, verse 18. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet, The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. Most Bibles do not use the word love in this passage. 
It's Matthew's account of the Easter story of the Christmas story. Blimey, I must be tired. I'm moving on to Easter already. The Christmas story. We know there's another bit in chapter two with the wise ones who turn up. Side note. That's sometime down the track. If you've got supposedly wise men, persons, kingly type people, camels, wagon trains, and gifts in your nativity set alongside the shepherds, your chronology is probably out of whack. That is, the wise ones turn up a bit later. But in this passage of the birth of Jesus and the journey particularly of Joseph. There is no explicit mention of love. And yet this passage is soaked in love, dripping with it, absolutely saturated. It's a bit matter of fact in the way that Matthew writes. This is how the birth of Jesus came about. His mother Mary was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. End of statement. This particular narrative of the Jesus story at this moment has a great focus on his father Joseph. The one who will take responsibility for the infant Jesus along with Mary. Here we have a young couple pledged in marriage before the birth. Joseph hears that Mary is pregnant. There's a little bit of me that would love to have earwigged in that conversation. What was it like? But that's not the point. The point is how Joseph responds to the news. And the scriptures declare that he was an upright and righteous man, a man who wanted to do the right thing by God, who had in his kit bag of life skills the desire and the willingness to honor God in all things. And so, drawing on the ancient laws of Israel, he chose the lesser path. Not the stoning of the unfaithful Mary, but the quiet dismissal. Because he had compassion for her. He did not want to expose her to public disgrace. His righteousness, his honoring of God is seen in his desire to honor other people, even when it looks like they have done the wrong thing. In fact, they have hurt him significantly. Because he is to be shamed in this. His promised wife has got herself pregnant. What a shame. What a shaming. Not what a pity, but what a shaming. A cultural shaming. And yet in his love, in his compassion, he chooses the gentlest of paths quietly dismissing her, trying to honor God and God's call for, for purity and all of those things and to honor her as a way of honoring God by not dragging her through the public disgrace that he could. An act of love. And then he has an encounter with the angel who explains to him what's going on. He's, he's acting in, in a level of ignorance. And then the angel comes and says, Joseph, this is the real deal. This is God at work and God needs you in this. God needs you to carry some of this. And so Joseph, in fact, takes on Mary's shame. There is a level at which culturally he says, yeah, folks, I am um, sorry. Got a bit carried away with myself. Uh, yeah, yeah, the kid's mine. And everyone goes, ooh, yeah, yeah. He takes that shame on himself. 
for love. As an act of loving her. Whether or not the emotion was there, we have no idea. It was in all likelihood an arranged marriage. Whether there was a level of affection, we don't know. But we do know that there is an act of love. In the act of taking Mary on and saying, yeah, Mary, come. Come and be part of my household. I will protect. I will stand for you and your son. He takes her shame for love. And in that, he prefigures his son, who in going to the cross takes our shame. For love. This is love at work. The kind of love that allows Joseph to have the humility to listen to the Spirit and to be faithful to the command of God. A commitment to the ways of God, a way of loving and honoring God. And I love the matter-of-factness of the scripture. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and he took Mary home as his wife. But he had no further union with her until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. Done. Our scriptures are not particularly good at uh, speaking about what actually that means. He said, yeah, Mine. I own this. I wear this. Took her home. But to honour what was going on. No sex. Until after Jesus. And we know that because yeah, Jesus had brothers. James was one of the leaders of the church. This is love at work. This is love in action. This isn't some rarefied emotional feeling. This is a commitment. And that is who God is. Because I reckon God gets mightily frustrated with you and I. Mightily annoyed. Angry. Disappointed. Heartbroken. But God does not stop loving us. In fact, God loved us before we even knew that God existed. That is who God is. And that is what we're called to. Friends, we are called to love like Joseph. To love like Jesus. The great preacher, civil rights leader, Martin Luther King. I have decided to stick with love, for hate is too great a burden to bear. Friends, if today you need to let go of some hates and some hurts, then seek the power of the Spirit of God, the grace of God, and allow those things to be taken from your life, that they might be filled, that you might be filled, that the garden of your life might be filled with the things of the kingdom of God. Chief among them, love. Let's pray. Loving Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for those moments where we have known your love as a beautiful thing, a life-giving thing in our lives. And we ask by the power of your Holy Spirit we might find healing for the hurts we have experienced for the negativity with which we approach love that we might recognize that you Lord should and could and are our first love where we have allowed other things to supplant you 
Give us the wisdom to know and the courage to deal. And above all else, fill us with a gratitude for your love. That in knowing your love, we might have hope. And in having hope, we might know peace. And in that peace, be a people of joy. Pour out your love, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's sing. of Jesus my command is this love one another as I have loved you for greater love has no one than this to lay down their life for one's friends may we love love like Jesus loves us to the glory of God and the blessing of our neighbours go in the grace and the love of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. God, arrest ye merry gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. Remember Christ our Saviour was born on Christmas Day. To save us all from Satan's power as we were gone astray. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. From God. 
God, our Heavenly Father, a blessed angel came, and unto certain shepherds bore tidings of the same. How that in Bethlehem was born the Son of God by name. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. Now we're 